Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Red Adolescence and welcome back to another video. Thank you all so much for tuning in. And in today's episode, we're going to be taking a closer look at a fragrance by the company Dua Fragrances. And this one is called Chaco Poseidon, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin the video, I do want to disclose that this product was sent to me for review by the company, but as always, I'm going to keep it real with you guys. As a matter of fact, I am on this company's press list. So every month or so, I get about four or five new fragrances. I know they've been very busy at work releasing new fragrances. And there's this sort of hybrid and tribrid craze lately where they sort of center their releases around very popular fragrances, but they'll either tweak a note or add a note or combine two fragrances together to create a brand new fragrance. And so with that being said, this is a pseudo original release. I don't think it's entirely original. So for those of you who don't know, Dua Fragrances is a company that pretty much takes popular fragrance DNAs and makes their own inspirations of them, whether we're talking about designer fragrances, but in the case uh, of late, it's more so niche fragrances. So here, here we have Chaco Poseidon. So Chaco Poseidon, uh, whenever you hear the word Poseidon in the Dua library, it basically refers to a fragrance that's a variant somehow of Creed Aventus. And the reason why they have so many in the library is because Creed Aventus has a lot of different batch variations. In the case of this one, I think the name is quite evident. Chaco Poseidon. This one is Creed's Aventus with an added chocolate note. So at first I was very intrigued before even getting my nose on it and I thought to myself, okay, I can appreciate chocolate and fragrances and I've certainly encountered chocolate in many different fragrances, but sometimes it can veer in the direction of being a novelty scent, kind of like a Demeter scent. But then I thought to myself, okay, well, we have fragrances like Hugo Boss, the scent Private Accord. We have Chocolate Greedy by Montal. We have Roses and Chocolate by Mancera. And I thought to myself, is it going to be a decadent type of a chocolate or is it going to be a subtle and mild accent that still doesn't take away from the wearability of the fragrance Ultimately, I figured it out. I'm excited to share it with you, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go ahead and start this video by taking a very quick and close look at the presentation. So the box for this one is rather simple. It just has the Arabic writing here on the front that says Dua. Dua translates to prayer. You open it up just like this and you have an informational section on the left that gives you a little bit of information on the brand. And then, of course, on the right here, you have a silhouette in which the bottle rests. The concentration of the fragrance is written on the spine of the box. And on the back, you will also find some more information about the company, like the size, concentration, and ingredients. So the bottle for this fragrance just has an image on the front of Poseidon, kind of drenched in chocolate, which I think is kind of cool. It's a little quirky and fun. On the side, it also says Chaco Poseidon. Now the cap for this one does click into place very securely, so you can pick it up from the cap. And the distribution on the atomizer is nice and wide. Let's continue with the smell. Now, as soon as this fragrance opens up, the first thing I smell is, you guessed it, chocolate. There's a lot of chocolate going on in this fragrance. And initially I thought to myself, hmm, this is a bit of a novelty scent. I don't think this is something that I can really pull off. And once I waited five to 10 minutes, the magic really started to occur. So initially I thought to myself, is this going to be a strong chocolate? Is it gonna be a gourmand chocolate? And I looked on their website and it actually has like a Belgian chocolate kind of a note. So then it kind of occurred to me, this is more of like a lactonic creamy chocolate. Lactonic meaning it smells like milk. Thankfully, it wasn't butyric, which would mean it smells like butter. I didn't get any of that, but I do get a very milky, creamy, sort of a gourmand, a uh, very flavorful sort of chocolate note in the opening. And I really enjoyed the opening, but I was a bit scared because for a name like Chaco Poseidon, I wasn't getting much Poseidon. I wasn't getting the Greek God in here, but eventually he emerged uh, about five to 10 minutes later, and then I started getting that event as DNA. So the first impression was, this is a lot of chocolate. I don't know if I could wear this. The second impression about five to 10 minutes later was, okay, this is a pineapple dipped in melted chocolate, and the chocolate was starting to solidify in the exterior. And then I started to enjoy it a lot more. And then I started making considerations towards the way that it smelled in regards to the complete 
aroma profile of Creed Aventus. And having a great degree of familiarity with Creed Aventus, I mean, I wore it on my wedding day and all throughout my honeymoon. I know there's pineapple, apple, black currant, birch tar, jasmine, cedarwood, vanilla, patchouli, the list goes on and on. And I wasn't getting that birch. I wasn't really getting those other fruity elements. So then I started to question whether this fragrance was made in isolation of just that pineapple note and it was just a combination of pineapple and chocolate. Then I started to get some of the other notes. Unfortunately, I didn't get any birch, which might actually be a good thing ultimately because I don't know how a smoky chocolate would smell. And I feel as though I really like fragrances like Aoud Greedy uh, or Chocolate Greedy rather by Montel. And one of the reasons that I really like that fragrance is because it is a straight up chocolate Ferrero Rocher type of a fragrance that I want to wear when I just want to smell delicious. And in the case of this one, I feel as though the addition of the chocolate might have been more of an effort to increase the compliment factor of this fragrance. Because certainly I know whenever I wear gourmand fragrances, people are like, mm, what are you wearing? Like that smells delicious. And so I actually did wear this recently. So I met up with a couple of my friends for for lunch, we went to a Thai restaurant, which is about 25 minutes away, and I do not solicit compliments. So I wasn't really fishing for compliments, but I did wear it, and I gave them both a hug, and I was waiting to see if they would say anything, but they didn't. I got home, and I resprayed it, and I was sitting on the couch, and I was taking a phone call, and my mother happened to walk past uh, the couch that I was sitting on, and she goes, wow, that smells really good, what is that? So I told my mother about it, and yes, okay, the only person that I did ask for uh, her opinion was my wife. And so I said, what do you think of this one? She goes, oh, that smells pretty good. And I asked her, is it something that you would wear? And she said, no. But that's not entirely unexpected because my wife doesn't wear a lot of gourmand fragrances. Ultimately, I don't think this is too much of a novelty scent. If you are in the wheelhouse of like, a Montal chocolate, a Mancera chocolate, or like a uh, Hugo Boss Descent Private Accord. If those are fragrances that you would wear comfortably, you would certainly wear this one comfortably. There's also kind of something in here that reminds me a little bit of Ani by Nishan Istanbul, although it doesn't smell anything like that fragrance, but in terms of like that chocolatey appeal, and I get a little bit of like a Coco Rico type of a chocolate vibe, if you've ever tried that fragrance by Jean-Paul Gaultier, with the exception that this one is not powdery. I get the other fruits that are typically found in Aventus and in the dry down, yes, I do get some of those more masculine elements. I never get the birch from this one and I've worn it on a number of occasions and I also don't get some of the other ingredients that are also characteristic of the Aventus DNA. But in terms of the usage of the pineapple, when I smell this like 10, 15, 20 minutes into the dry down, I'm like, yep, there's Aventus. Again, if you are a fan of Aventus, I always recommend buying the real thing. Of course, the, the companies will use captive molecules that are not accessible to a lot of other companies that do clone these fragrances in the factories, I should say, that clone them. And so I always recommend going out there and trying the real thing. But if you're in the market for something new, fun, playful, flirtatious, definitely decadent, decadent excuse me, and gourmand, give this one a try. I think you'll really enjoy it. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, I would certainly consider this a unique fragrance, although it's a pseudo original release. And I only say that because yes, after a while, you do start to smell a little bit of that Creed Aventus in here. So inevitably, it does borrow elements from Creed Aventus. In terms of the overall smell, I do think that this is a very niche smell. I'm not saying it's not a pleasant smell. I think it's an incredibly pleasant smell. Uh, just because chocolate is one of those ingredients that everybody can't help but like. And so I do think it's a pleasant smell, but it will be up to you to make the determination as to whether or not this is something that you would actually purchase and wear comfortably because it is quite a strong chocolate smell that you're gonna get from this one. In terms of the longevity on this one, I got about eight hours. Um, I must admit, I do think that the chocolate is certainly contributing in the fact that this fragrance lingers for so long. Projection was amazing for two hours, and then it started to sit a little bit closer to the skin. I wanna say it became a skin scent at like the five hour mark. So despite the fact that it lasted a long time, after about five hours or so, you are gonna have a hard time smelling it unless you dig your nose into whatever part of your body you sprayed it on. In terms of the versatility, I think that this is a cold weather fragrance. I think that this is one to wear casually, just 
just, it's a very fun scent. I probably wouldn't wear this one in a formal scenario just because that chocolate is so strong and pervasive. And so I probably don't wanna give off the impression that if you're at a wedding, like you actually spilled some of the chocolate from the chocolate fountain on your clothing. And so, but I do think that this is a really nice smell. And of course, if you like it, then wear it whenever you want. These are just recommendations. And I do find this to be a rather unisex fragrance uh, as opposed to Creed Aventus, which I find to be rather masculine. In terms of the presentation, I think it's quite minimal, but it keeps the cost down. And my final verdict on this one is if you are in the market for a chocolate-based scent, definitely don't miss this one. Uh, Duo Fragrances also has another one called Belgian Choco Chocolate Truffle or Belgian Choco Truffle. I don't entirely remember what it's called, but that one has some similarities to this one. Uh, but this one I think is much more lush and dense, and I think it allows the appeal of the chocolate to proliferate on account of the Aventus. So it kind of, it makes you want to isolate the two and smell the Aventus on its own and the chocolate on its own. But I do think that it's a really nice blend of the two. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. That was my review of Chaco Poseidon by Duo Fragrances. If you own or have tried this fragrance, I would love to know what you think. So please go ahead and leave a comment down below. Also, if you are new to this channel and you took something of value from this video, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to this uh, channel and support what I've been doing for the past seven plus years. I would love that. It's easy and it's free. All it requires is you clicking that red button in the corner. And this way, whenever I do upload future fragrance related content, it will get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads. Thanks again for watching. I love you all and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye.